three, two, one, go! That was the first preview of Colors and Mayhem. It is a Homestuck Friday Night Funkin' mod project that I have decided to do for a while. You're probably thinking, or not, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, uh, what was the shit that I just watched? Uh, if you know what Friday Night Funkin' is, you'll, you'll guess, okay, it's a Friday Night Funkin' mod. But if you don't know what it is, or you've never heard of it, or you've never even seen it, it's a bit hard to explain in a single sentence. I will explain how Homestuck's new creative medium is looking to be Friday Night Funkin'. F and F for short. Friday Night Funkin' is a game created by Ninja Muffin 99, Phantom Arcade, Evil Skater, and Kawhi Sprite on Newgrounds.com. It was made for the Ludum Dare 43 game jam and got content updates as the time went on. For the time being, the community has created mods for the video game, games that have either added new features to the game itself, or told a different story through that video game. Now what the fuck does this have to do with Homesuck? Well, a good friend of mine has brought up their concern about how a lot of Homesuck fans story tell through only one single medium itself, which is fan adventures on MSPFA. Up until um, recently, uh, there has been a rise in Homestuck FNF mods. Now, we don't know why this has happened, but so far it, there seems to be a rising of FNF fans who were either former Homestucks or current Homestucks, or FNF fans who have become Homestuck fans just as well. This reminded me of a similar instance in which the Sonic EXE fandom and the Friday Night Funkin' fandom pretty much merged together to a point where, where you can't really talk about Sonic EXE without talking about Friday Night Funkin' and vice versa. So far, there have been a lot of Homestuck creatives who have created Homestuck fan works through this Friday Night Funkin' medium, such as the Versus Vriska mod made by Yo is Crow, um, Sunday Night Strifin made by Dory Buns, and and Sunday Night Striden made by HT made by H Thagomizer, if I pronounce that correctly. Now, at its current state, Friday Night Funkin is mostly being used to tribute to Homestuck as opposed to Storytell. 
but that doesn't mean that the possibilities aren't there. Because of how easy it is to mod Friday Night Funkin', it's a no-brainer that people might use this format in order to express their homestuck love or whatever. Take me, for instance. I would consider myself a new Homestuck fan. Um, I, I joined the fandom about nine months ago. And to show my love for it, I've created mods about Homestuck, about the characters, about situations that have happened. Um, it's also a good way to get people interested in the source material too. It's short, the music is usually catchy or fun to listen to, and it's quite memorable. We already have uh, talented creators in the Homestuck community right now who can make art, make music, um, probably program. And those talents can merge easily with Friday Night Funkin'. I've decided to um, spend time and maybe show you through the process of creating like an FNF mod based off of Homestuck, just to see if it gets you interested or whatever. So right now I'm starting off with a concept sketch just to basically plan out all the animations and poses, as you can see right there. Um, I already finished one for Card Cat, so I'm making one for Tavros right now. So I make sure to keep all the shapes consistent. Uh, I look for a reference just to make sure, you know, I get every aspect of the character right. Looks like I'm looking for a wheelchair reference just to be sure that I get the wheelchair looking neat and tidy. Over here you can see I plan to have the finger tap on the bars of the wheelchair. So that's indicated by the little wavy lines on this finger, so. Since this is a concept sketch, I don't really have to worry about making everything look neat and tidy. So if I do want to readjust things like stretching and skewing and whatnot, I can I can always do that without having to worry about anything. I'm having a tough time with his hair. I decided to readjust his head, I guess. I guess his body was too small, so I made it bigger just to better fit the proportions. I guess I had to redraw his hand again. You don't really need any fancy fancy art program to make these concepts or whatever. As you can see, I'm using something as simple as MS Paint, so it really goes to show how accessible modding is. So I guess I'm looking for inspiration for the different poses. Um, looks like I found one from the open bound where he has his arm behind his head. So I think I'm using that for the left pose. For the right pose, I'm looking for that. That's um, him pulling out his fetus spawn cards. He will pull that out um, in the level, so I figured to have that as his right leaning pose. It's 
since I'm going to be reusing some of his body parts, I don't really have to keep every sketch on model. Because I can always just rotate it and skew and whatever. This one's more of like a personality type pose, just to really show the character's, well, character. So, um, I have him nervously pointing at himself. Um, this one, I guess, is a lot more excited, um, confident. You know, there's no other troll around to put him down or whatever. So I open up Flash 8. That's the program that I use to animate. Um, this is where we're going to be making our assets, our sprites, our animations, and stuff like that. So we're going to copy uh, the concepts onto Flash 8, just so I can you know, trace over it, and then draw and animate it. Make sure everything is proportional. Then I'm kind of just mapping out all the poses in the images, just to make sure they look right. And we can start drawing. So I always start off with the head. I never go wrong with the head. For this style, all horns are lineless, so I just kind of fill them in with like a shape just so I can color them in later. I got his collar wrong, so I'm gonna redo it. There we go. So with this style, I don't really like draw every single outline. I make sure to get just the main silhouette outline of the like the legs and the arms and hands and pieces and stuff and then I'll fill in all that little detail with like a um, smaller brush so coloring the lines of the horns and stuff At times you're going to see me pause in, probably because I'm somewhere, maybe I got distracted on a YouTube video. I think I was watching Funk McLovin's, like, self video for the other Sakon. It was very, very entertaining and intriguing, so I got super distracted. <laughs> I'm trying all these body parts on completely different layers, just so it's easier to animate them later.
Now that I finished um, drawing most of his body parts, I'm probably going to be converting them to symbols pretty soon. I'll go eat dinner, come back. Now I'm converting every one of the drawings and body parts into symbols. Symbols are basically just nested animations with their own timelines and stuff. So you can have an animation within an animation and it makes everything super easy. So now I'm going to be drawing this wheelchair. Now I'm animating the hand right here. Since I'm animating it inside of the symbol, I'm gonna, I'm animating the hand inside the symbol now. Um, decided to do it frame by frame because you know I don't want to convert every single finger into its own symbol and then just animate that and you know. With symbols, you can rotate and stretch and skew and all that stuff, and all the animation inside of it stays intact. And because it's in a library, you can always go inside of it and edit the symbols, and they will remain consistent through all and every use of that symbol. So right now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to change the hair, I could go inside the hair symbol and edit it, and then I don't have to edit for every single frame. So I'm inside the face symbol, and what I do is just draw like a, a multitude of faces inside one symbol, just cause um, it's just an easier way to stay organized, you know? Just have all my base drawings in like one spot, you know? So what I like to do for the idle animations is I, I like to have the I like to have the faces squish a little when they bounce. Uh, flash crashed earlier, as you can see, but luckily I save almost every few seconds, so I don't lose any work. Flash is notorious for crashing pretty frequently, so be sure to save. So I just made a I just duplicated my idle so I can make the left pose. So I removed all the idle animations just so I can make the, the new pose now. Going inside of the face symbol and making a new face. From here on out, it's pretty much just easy work. It's like um, reusing symbols when you need to. And if you have to make a new drawing, then go ahead and make a new drawing. So obviously I need to make a new drawing for the face. And since the eyebrows and the hair are pretty much the same color, I want to kind of, you know, separate them with like a outline. I know Tomb Boom probably has like a, a node that can like, you know, deal with all that sort of stuff. But this is 2005 Flash 8 and, you know, we did everything manually. I'm making his mouth closed in this face because on his left pose, he kind of goes um, and you know, I'm gonna lip sync that 
Um. Type uh, lip sync, you know. I also like to draw new drawings for animations, just because it, you know, it looks looks fluid, it looks um, animated. More animated than just like, you know, skewing and stretching just the same symbol. Um, I try not to do it too often though, because making new drawings for everything just is very tedious. Usually you'll see me testing out uh, the animation uh, by like pressing control enter which basically just test the movie i coded it to where if i press the left arrow it'll play the left animation the right arrow you know and so on so forth etc i do that just to you know see how the animation looks relative to one another you know so i'm, I'm starting on the right pose um so for this one you can't really stretch the body to where it looks you know good so i have to make a new drawing so he's going to be kind of hunched over i think right here i'm probably watching like everywhere everything everywhere at the end of time so i'm probably going to get super distracted in this segment it was a pretty good movie Hands, hands, hands. So this is where I'm starting the Udo Spawn section, you know. I'm gonna draw all these cards. I like to draw hands as like one big mass and then just draw the, the fingers separate and like a different color. That's just the style that I'm going for for this mod. Um, not gonna be too accurate as long as it shows what it is. I'm going to go inside the face symbol again, draw him a new face. His eyes are going to be pretty wider this time since he's a lot more excited. best thing about FNF mods is that most of the animation in the game is pretty minimal, so you don't really have to make too much. <clears throat> Final Funk is probably like the only other moddable game that doesn't require like months and months and months of like animating like a single character. For instance, like fighting games, modding those, if you want to add a new character, you have to animate an entire set of animations. But for Night Funkin, at the, at the least, is like five, four of which are like two frames each. And the idol can be like three frames at the, at the least, you know? Testing it again, it looks pretty good. You're gonna be able to see what it all looks in game pretty soon. Now it's time for the down animation. So I'm gonna be bending his head. Bending his hair just to make sure it looks like it has volume. Mm -hmm. 
that's when I guess I do have to draw a new hand because his shoulders are a lot lower, but his hands are in the same place, and you know, can't really skew that without it looking tacky. And I seem to get distracted pretty easily. So the face symbol, making a new face, you already know how it is. Looks like I forgot some of the, uh, the troll eyeshadow on some of the faces, so I'm going back there and filling it. I'm using a special brush setting called like Paint Behind, so I can paint behind a drawing. Um, I could just make another layer and then just draw under it, but you know, I guess I just did not do that. So I guess I'm not going to have him nervously look down. I guess I'm just going to have his eyes closed. And I'm just not noticing, but I forgot his eyebrows. I hope I noticed that. Well, past me noticed it too and drew some on. Or else that would be rather embarrassing. I see this is the end of the movie because I've been pretty still for the longest. Now for his up animation. Let's get started. Up animations for me are like probably the most hardest to execute. Just cause um <coughs> just cause like it's hard to make a character look Taller? I don't know. For down animations, you can always just make them bend down, but you can't make a character bend up unless if they're on their tippy toes, or they have their head up high, or they have um, they just straighten their legs and stuff. So up poses are are um, are a gamble, but you know when done right, they always look pretty good, and they usually end up being my favorite poses to do. Looks like for now, I'm reusing some of the faces for his up pose. I think I'm allowed to do that. I don't think it's against the rules. So for now, I'm drawing him new feet. I'm drawing him new legs. Um, because I couldn't skew it, couldn't skew or stretch it to where it looked good. So, I guess this pose called for a new drawing. It's gonna happen a lot. You're gonna end up having a pose that calls for a new drawing. You can't really skew it. Um, unless if you make like an entire puppet, an entire flash rig where you can do almost any pose and you don't have to make a new drawing. 
In that case, then, sure. <laughs> but most Funkin' rigs don't really, like, make a separate thing for every arm, for every leg, you know? And usually it kind of looks better when it's just redrawn. But that's just me. So I'm pretty much finished with all the animations. So I think right now I'm going to get started on just sketching out the background. I think I was gonna go for like a perspective thing, you know? Let me show like the corner of his room. I'm pretty sure rather shortly I kinda give up on that. If I do a one point perspective thing. Yeah. kind of noticing that the center of the perspective isn't on center of the stage. Um, but hey, them's the breaks, I guess. I'm probably not going to fully complete the background for uh, this section. Uh, I believe I got someone else to do the background for this level. You're not gonna see it uh, because I contacted them you know, shortly after I finished making this recording. So whenever that gets done, I'll hit them up. You can pretty much make a good background in Flash, it's possible. It's definitely possible. It's like I'm organizing all my files in the library, you know, just so when anyone wants to look through it, they don't have to search through all my fuck ass. Disorganized. I opened up Adobe Animate for this one because Adobe Animate is the only one that has um, capabilities to export a sprite sheet. So I'm opening up Friday Funkin'. Uh, I exported both those characters, um, both their PNGs and XMLs, so I'm adjusting their offsets in-game. This is Psych Engine, by the way, which is basically a modified version of Friday Night Funkin', which adds a whole lot of modding capabilities. Um, the song was already pre-charted by a good pal of mine. Setting up all the stage data. Now I'm opening up the Lua file and I'm coding in all the backgrounds. Um, you can use this, something as simple as M, like Notepad and all that stuff because it's all just like scripts being ran through. So you don't need anything fancy. You don't need to compile or anything. It's all just scripts. So. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's pretty much it.